So today I thought we'd take a look at this faulty brushless DC controller. I started testing these controllers out several months ago and they are really good for the price. It's kind of hard to find a controller that'll go all the way to 80 volts and this one claims it can put out up to 1600 watts and they had the non-haul version and there's several sellers you can find on Amazon for example. There's also some that do have the haul sensor feedback incorporated into the board. I have seen these cheaper on places like AliExpress but I haven't bought any from there. The shipping costs may make the savings vanish. I'm not sure about that but you can get them apparently with the heat sink and without the heat sink and just extremely affordable to be a powerful little controller like it is. So I have had fun playing with these but I have this one that while on my bench my jumper leads may have come across or something I'm not 100% sure but the last time I went to test this particular board I don't have any LED light flash here on this board and it's not working. So if we put our meter on volts DC and let's cut the power supply on. I have it set for right at 58 volts. We get our power coming into the board. And if I check across this large cap here, we do have our over 57 volts getting through here. Let's zoom in a bit here so you can see it a little bit better. This that looks like a secondary cap, see I have no voltage here so this should probably be anywhere from 10 to 20 volts, probably step down. We know it should be less than 35 volts just due to the cap rating, but going back here to this 100 volt cap, you can see again we have our 57 volts and we should be getting all the way through to what looks like a little regulator here as well. So we're probably stepping down with a DC to DC converter and then going to this little regulator and we have nothing going in on pin three here. So it looks like we have an issue with this part of the circuit here. We need to figure out why we're not getting any voltage here to this cap on our secondary voltage. So this looks like a switcher or a DC to DC converter chip. Let's bring over the microscope so you can see it. It's a little bit closer. Let's start off giving the whole board an overview so I won't forget to do that. We come in here. Here's our MOSFETs. Notice the NTC here to monitor the MOSFETs. That's cool. These MOSFETs are a G053N10. We have six of these MOSFETs. And when I look up these MOSFETs, the first thing that pops up is JLCPCB does sell these as part of their components. We do have the data sheet. So if we pull up the data sheet, we see this is an in-channel enhancement mode MOSFET, 100 volt, 95 amp, very impressive. I'll briefly share some of the ratings here and the electrical characteristics in case you find that interesting. We also have the motor driver chip here and this is a very similar chip that you see on some other BLDCs like the one I've used in the past in some videos and retrofits. Seems to be a pretty common brushless driver chip. We also have an unmarked or actually a laser etched off markings on U4. So this is going to be our microprocessor and no markings left on that. But getting back to the area that we're really concerned about here, we see this little switcher chip U1 is a TPS750D and I cannot find any information on this chip. We also have a 78L05 5 volt regulator here on the upper left corner. So we investigate the pin out of this switcher chip, we do see that the right side, which will be pins 5 through 8, is all on this negative bus here. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but they're together. We can see pin 1 here, so it goes is a U-shape, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 through 8 is going to our negative. I've seen chips where this bottom left is either enable or feedback, and same thing with pin 3. Um, Pin 3 or 4 is probably going down to the resistors down below. In either feedback or enable, this upper left pin is most likely positive. And pin 2 is going over to the diode and the inductor. And we'll just test out pin 1 and make sure it is going over to the positive rail. So if we put the meter on screen here and we get to the positive side of the capacitor, yep, that does go to pin 1. And I do believe the negative side here goes to five through eight here awesome and it's probably going to show something to ground here too on the enable and the feedback if that's true and it looks like that is 
correct. I don't know for sure which one's which there. We can look at that. We also need to make sure pin 2. It looks like the trace is going towards the diode here. Hopefully it shows up on camera, but yeah. It's an output down to this capacitor. It looks like that is correct. And even though I can't find any information on this converter chip, I have used one very similar before by XL Semi, and I have a few on hand. So the XL7005A will also go up to 80 volts. So it's the first one that came to mind. There may be others that'll work just as well or better. But since I had these on hand, I started looking into this one and it's definitely within the voltage range. The current, I just don't know about the rating on the TPS750D. But if we look at our pinout, it absolutely matches up. We do see the exposed pad is ground. I'll verify that. We'll remove the other one. Ground on 5 through 8. VN on 1. The switching output on 2. Then feedback and enable. So I do believe this is going to be a good fit. So since I do have one of these, let's try to replace it and see how it works. I'm going to put a heat sink over this capacitor because I'm going to use hot air and it's just so close to this capacitor I'm scared that it, it may make it swell and pop. I'm going to put some flux on the IC, bring over the hot air, oops there we go it's mighty close. I'm going to speed the video up through some of this. Waiting for the area to get hot enough to melt the solder. Yep, it's starting to liquefy and there we go. And we definitely do have that ground plane on the bottom. I'm going to get some braid wick. Let's clean up some of this lead free solder that's on the board. I'm going to cut my ring light up just a little bit. I'm going to get some 91% alcohol and let's clean the board up. Some more flux. I'm going to prep the pads with a little bit of leaded solder here. This would actually be a good time to get out my new little smaller pin soldering iron. Maybe I'll get it out a little bit later. This one's already at temperature right now and I can turn it up sideways. At least prep the pads for now. I'm going to add some more flux and let's bring the XL Semi chip over. Pin 1 goes to the dot like so. We're close enough here that once the solder starts to liquefy, the chip should self-align. And there we go, it's starting to align now. I think I'm going to touch up the pins just a little bit. So I'm going to take this time to bring over this little Finerci little pencil soldering iron. It's pretty neat. I have it set on 698 at the moment. Plugs into USB-C for power and up to 20 volts. We'll put a little more flux and let's see if we can touch up these leads a little bit. I just like how fine this tip is and it's still got enough mass to be able to work with ICs like this, the smaller ones. Nice. I think that's good. Let's clean up. Get our brush. There we go. There's our XL7005A. Let's see how it does. So back now ready to test out. We're going to put our power back on the board. And there we go. And we do see our light. That's a good sign. And that LED blink does mean it's ready to go. Let's do a voltage check here. Still just under 58 volts. So what do we have on our secondary voltage here? 15.2 volts, awesome. And then evidently this little five volt regulator is good too because our LED is flashing, but let's just see what it looks like. We should have our 15 volts coming in on pin three and pin one, 5.01, perfect. So back now I just have this temporarily connected with some jumpers. And I have an Ego 16 inch saw BLDC motor here for testing. It's going to make sure here that our leads are not touching. You can see here this is the gear where the chainsaw usually drives 
the output just got it clamped up so it don't touch like so now this testing is going to be no load and the wire length should obviously be minimized for proper install but for testing this is fine i only have a 5 volt rated power supply feeding it at the moment anyway so yeah power on and our light is blinking and ready to go so i'm going to turn up the potentiometer and this being hauless it probably will jump a little bit especially at slow speeds that's one thing the haul feedback helps a lot with but this hauless is very convenient we can always turn it up kind of quick and it's fairly smooth and then it's really smooth on after that in an application where we're using this BODC controller and we just want to leave the pot turned up when we open and close the contact to give power to the board it will start up fairly smooth they just jump just a little bit and then take off smooth and we'll do it again here so that does help a lot from starting off and of course we can turn this on up as well to full speed and there we go i think that got it i'm very happy with that it's going to show you here the bottom of the board has the traces for the power coming in and your three phases out and i think the manufacturer usually shows pictures of the heat sink being here if you add a heat sink to this board anything over like five amps does require a heat sink but i bought these little small heat sinks here and they do have double-sided tape and i'm just going to put them across the top of the mosfets like so with some testing in the future on this board i do want to take time to share here on video that i did find some more information on these controllers that i thought was very interesting so at the time of this video editing if you go to this seller that has the same style BODC controller, but the hall feedback type. It looks like the brand of this one is Go DIY Modules. And at the very bottom of this listing on Amazon, even though this is not the one I purchased, I noticed that it does have safety documents on Amazon and it's a PDF link. So this user's manual is very handy. I see a lot of comments of people buying these and unhappy about uh, not having information or any instructions so being able to get a hold of this manual is a big deal even though this is version 1.0 and it could definitely have some issues at least we do have it and it's pretty thorough it's got a lot of information you can pause this or just go to it yourself and pull it up but it shows a lot of things about it including dimensions and of course that heat sink across the back that i guess as long as it's insulated it's fine but just be aware of that it's got to be careful putting that heat sink across those buses but we have the pinouts and in-depth pinouts too like and maybe you're looking for the UART communication or something of that nature is it's actually giving you that and what i was very surprised about was this schematic diagram and i wish i would have even seen this during the week or so prior i was doing the troubleshooting on this board i had not come across this yet so you don't even get this with any higher end stuff these days we at least have a basic schematic diagram and how about this it even shows our 15 volt voltage reduction chip it shows the tps 750d but it shows everything here that we tested out and found to be true but it's all right here plain as day it shows the 5 volt voltage regulator it shows the u4 chip it shows the anti-reverse connection protection there's another MOSFET on the board. It's just there for the reverse polarity protection. It shows our MOSFETs and the driver circuit. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Really happy to come across that. So glad I got to share it with you guys before I posted this video. But this is very handy as well. It shows the LED indication. So we know what kind of faults we're getting. A little bit of information on the hall. It talks about the heat sink. If you're going above 5 amps to add a heat sink. Some other information about tuning. So I thought that was very helpful. So I also wanted to make this information available on our Facebook page called On The Bench. So I did put a post in there sharing this PDF file. As well as a link to the board like I'm using. Not the link to the one that had the PDF file but the one that's hauless. If you never have checked out On The Bench. I urge you to do so because it's a place that we can share photos or videos and ask questions as a community. Sometimes it just works out a lot better than sharing on YouTube and the whole community don't necessarily see every comment. So I hope you found this video helpful today. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have some links down in the video description. 
of some of these BODC controllers as well as some other tools that I find helpful on my workbench. Any of those links you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.